Today's second segment is a great one, focusing on an important organization helping the youth in our region. We have three wonderful people here today representing Boys and Girls Clubs of Southwest Virginia, a local nonprofit that celebrated its 25th anniversary in 2022. Please help me in welcoming Bailey Jenkins, Carl York, and Emily Pinkerton. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Uh, So we're really excited to share more with listeners today about the great things that you're doing for and in our community. Let's start with some brief introductions, if you don't mind. How about you, Bailey? Yeah, so I'm Bailey Jenkins. I am a local realtor here in Roanoke with MKB Realtors and my team, Jenkins & Associates Real Estate Group. Um, So my team is composed of Stephanie Coleman and our newest member that hasn't even been announced yet, which is Chelsea Cobbler. So we're really excited to have her. Um, But yeah, my team is um, built with smart, savvy, client relationship driven agents that are also very passionate about our community and local resources that make it thrive and make it the community that we love. So um, one of those resources is obviously my favorite, which is the Boys and Girls Club of Southwest Virginia. Um, And they hold a very special place in my heart personally because I've been involved with them on and off for about, well, over 10 years since high school. So um, I started... Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. So, it that's, was, yeah. Started out volunteering in high school with, um, you know, whatever I was doing at the time. And then most recently, they opened me with Welcome Arms to handle their social media accounts with, um, right when I was moving back to Roanoke from Richmond, kind of getting my feet under me with my business. So not only was that incredibly helpful for me, just getting my feet under me and, you know, kind of getting my start, but I loved being able to, use my skills to promote a club and their mission that I believe in wholeheartedly. It was very good for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I love she that it's come full stuff. circle that, yeah. you know, you were able to bring your skills back and really, oh my gosh, give back to the organization that, you know, you were part of as a kid. Yeah, it was awesome. It was a very full circle thing. And when I got my feet under me and kind of things started rocking and rolling, um, I kind of transitioned out of that role because, you know, I'm doing my own social media stuff too, but I became a blue door donor, which is, I'm very happy to be. It means that I donate monthly to the Boys and Girls Club. So to me, that's my way of giving back and kind of thanking them for helping me when I needed some help too. Well, thank you for doing it. That's such important work. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) So yeah, um, I love the Boys and Girls Club. I'm also a new member of our marketing committee too. So anytime that myself or my team has an opportunity to promote them or show them love, we jump at the opportunity too. So awesome. Yeah. Carl, how about you? Well, I, you know, I just found out I'm the longest standing board member, <laughs> so this white hair I earned. So I've been with uh, the Boys and Girls Club uh, on the board for a couple decades now. Wow, congratulations. Thank you very much. Awesome. Yeah, they're, they're building me a ramp so I can <laughs> I can get into the place. But uh, no, I mean, we, you know, it's, it's a great organization. Uh, obviously, I believe in it. I've been there for a couple decades, and uh, we have a lot of really great board members that uh, that have stayed on. And uh, it really helps your organization, you know, they, they have uh, tentacles that go out into the community, you know a lot of people, uh, but we're always looking for more. We're looking for, of course. for people to help us. But I, I'm, uh, I got on the Boys and Girls Club uh, board. I, I was the uh, director of advertising, marketing and public affairs for Kroger in Mid-Atlantic. And so I think that was attractive to the board. And, and they said, hey, we need a guy from Kroger. And so, uh, but once I got on, you know, once you get on, it doesn't really matter where you're from. <laughs> I mean, you're just you're just all in. I, once you go to the club, and I, I recommend anybody going to the club and and uh, you know doing a tour or something because uh, once you see the kids, you just fall in love with them. I believe I mean, it. They love to be there. They love to be there. They they they're learning so much, and um, you know it's it's sort of a gap fill for for parents sometimes uh, after school. The kids come there. We bus them there. Uh, or they or the parents drop them and uh, they just make such great friendships and uh, we even have a couple board members uh, that were board kids that were club yeah. kids I mm-hmm. love that so much talk oh about full circle oh, yeah, I know yeah. it I love that so that, that's kind of my that's story so but uh, you know Emily's got a good one too yeah let's hear about your story Emily <laughs> Liz, well, thanks for giving us this platform and <laughs> I am and it's always a pleasure to be next to these two people that give so generously um, in their time and resources and connections to who we are but um, my name is Emily Pinkerton I'm the director of development for Boys and Girls Clubs of Southwest Virginia I am a Roanoke native myself nice. um, who 
left to go to the big city of Charlotte after <laughs> high school and college, um, and then recently returned um, back in 2021. Pretty um, recent. Yeah, yeah, pretty recent, and was uh, seeking out development opportunities coming back to my hometown. And a fun story, If I, I don't know that anybody wants to throw back to the fall of 2020, but <laughs> that is when I was interviewing. Oh, um, wow. Different for lifetime. jobs here in town and uh, was on a Zoom call, the first interview for this role with our then CEO, Michelle Davis. And she's told, us, told me a story um, that has really stayed with me since then. And she referenced an article from the Roanoke Times. Um, from 2017 that basically said that if you are born in poverty in the Renwick Valley, you are pretty much worse off than anywhere else in the country in terms of upward mobility. This was based on a Harvard study. How is that possible? (laughs) So that, talk about inspiration to get up every day. And I think any of my colleagues would would say the same, that if we can be one small part of changing that trajectory, and I hope that things since 2017 have improved (laughs) in terms of that Uh statistic. Um, But I, I do think the work we do every day is one small part of that solution and mm-hmm. changing the trajectory for these kids' lives. Oh, I love that. Gosh, well, thank you all. I mean, your whole group and organization, your group, thank you so much for what you're doing, because what an important piece of our region. And oh my gosh, giving back is so important. My husband is a middle school teacher. So mm-hmm. while we don't have kids in our own house, we certainly have the sports and, you know, history bowls and academic things that, you know, we see sort of the direct results of what you guys are doing to give back to them and help those kids find a place to hang out. So yeah. thank you, guys. Uh, Bailey, so you're with Jenkins and Associates Real Estate Group and MKB Realtors, who is sponsoring today's segment. And you're also an advocate in support of the Boys and Girls Club, as we've talked about in depth. Um, Looking to a little bit more about yourself and your engagement and partnership, do you mind kind of diving into that a little bit more? Yeah. So like I said, anytime that we have the opportunity to kind of partner with the Boys and Girls Club, we jump at it. Um, Most recently, my team kind of partnered with the Boys and Girls Club and Chris's Coffee and Custard to, yeah, love the place. my (laughs) other favorite. Yeah. (laughs) Chris is a great they're my dudes. <laughs> they're, they're neighbors of ours. They're yeah. nice. Yeah, you'd see so. me a lot. <laughs> yeah, they're incredible. <laughs> Shout out to Chris if you're listening. Mm. Um, but yeah, so we had these cool coupons made up. The front was a little coupon to Chris's Coffee and Custard, and the back was um, all about the Boys and Girls Club and a special plug to give Roanoke on the 19th in April. Yes, right. Yep, so there had a little QR code there so you can give and set that up. So we handed those out to all of our clients that showed up to the floor duty that day. So we kind of do that every couple months or so just to kind of have open office hours to help anybody with their real estate needs. Um, so yeah, that most recently is what we did. Um, you know, I, like I said, any, any of any time that we, we can do, we are volunteers. We're excited about the four and the fourth race mm-hmm. this summer. So we'll be regular attendees to all of their events. So we like to just promote them and make sure everybody kind of is aware of the club and the benefits of them. I think that a lot of times our community parts of it doesn't even know that the club exists. So sure. whether that may be they don't have a need for it or whatever it may be, um, I think the club is so important and it provides an implemental resource for our kids. You know, it it creates this happy, encouraging environment for them to go and feel safe and encouraged to be who they want to be in this life, which, you know, I think every child deserves that. It's the most so. important thing they can learn, right? Absolutely. How to be themselves. She, barely, she fell in love with the kids, too. Yeah. I love them. Clearly, <laughs> obviously. So sweet. Yeah. Well, and I just, I'm so fascinated by the fact that you you were volunteering as a kid doing this, you know, mm-hmm. and now as an adult, it's, it's still so important to you. Yeah. And I just love that. Well, thank you. That's fabulous. So, <laughs> Carl, you have sort of hinted at why you are so passionate about this. With, yes. I mean, 20 years as a board member under your belt is incredible. I mean, what an accomplishment. Mm-hmm. Um, so, kind of curious if you can sort of build on her response on why you're such a dedicated champion of Boys and Girls well, you know, I think they forgot about me. You know, I, I hide <laughs> in the corner and I just keep showing up. And uh, no, I mean, um, uh, you know, uh, organizations like this are very important in any community. And, uh, you know, our kids are our future, which you hear all the time. Uh, we talk about it all the time. Uh, you know, uh, there's an old saying, you know, you, you, you're, you plant trees that you never enjoy the shade of. And, you know, some of these kids are like that. You know, you want to love on them now and help them navigate uh, these times, you know, when they're little. And one day they'll be board members. They'll be the executive director. They'll be <laughs> Bailey. They'll be whatever. And, and you want to pay it forward. So, um, but this is a club that really gets it, that's been around. And we've had great people in the past. Uh, 
uh, John Dyer was one of the guys that started it. And uh, Mike Wise, who recently uh, passed away, was just a great guy that really, uh, you know, was one of those guys that really advocated for the club. Um, there was just uh, Dan Lehman was another yeah. one. It's just fantastic. Those guys are still around, well, except for Mike. But those a lot of those guys that were on the on the board are still around and they're still a part of it. And that tells you a lot about a club. You know, a lot of times boards, you know, people roll in and roll off, um, but you never really get away from the Boys and Girls Club. And that says a lot about what the club is about. I was going to comment on the fact that the longevity is, it doesn't just apply to you, it applies to other board members too. And obviously people who are volunteering in some way, um, which that's really a true testament, right? It's not just about you know, your love of that one particular event or, or group or whatever, you're looking at a years long prospect of working together in partnerships. Absolutely. And I, I mean, the, again, uh, it, it's all about the kids. Uh, you know, once you see the kids in there uh, being tutored uh, after school, uh, playing, uh, learning social skills, uh, learning how to deal with the world today. I mean, it's different than when I grew up. It's a lot different. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of pressures, a lot of challenges on them. And and we have great uh, adults in there that are, are teaching them, that, that work at the club or that are donating their time, tutoring. Uh, it's just a great, very positive uh, place to be for young people. I think that's a perfect second to Emily telling us something, uh, you know, even more about the organization and what sets you apart from other after school service providers. Yeah, thanks, Liz. Well, you know, we kind of refer to it as the club um, <laughs> as a whole, but yeah. very yeah. not exclusive. It's very yeah, inclusive. Yes, I love it. It's a very, inclu- very inclusive place. But we actually have 11 locations across Southwest Virginia. Nice. Um, and actually, Boys and Girls Club of America just announced the 5,000th club. Wow. So that is one of the misconceptions that I often hear around town is that, oh, we see Boys and Girls Club of America on commercials, these big name celebrities mm-hmm. in Washington, Jennifer Lopez that are out promoting, you almost get a lot of funding from the national organization. Mm. And while we do see some of that pass through funding, if you're at, you know, Buffalo Wild Wings or Old Navy, and you see those signs at the mm-hmm. checkout, we do see a little bit of that come our way. But, but we so are, do 4,999 yeah, other exactly. groups. Exactly. <laughs> so we are actually our own 501c3 here in, uh, in Southwest Virginia. And so we are responsible, and it's, that's my main job as director of development, wow. is to make sure that we have the funding we need to serve over 1,000 youth every year. Wow. Um, and what we do primarily is after school and summer programming. And our mission is to enable all young people, especially those who need us most, to reach their full potential as productive and caring and responsible citizens. And so what sets us apart, um, one is that youth development programming. So we are focused on three core outcomes. The first being academic success. So whether a child is in first grade or in high school, every club, um, we do serve uh, from six to 18 year olds, um, every club is gonna have a power hour where our mentors, our youth staff are there to help them with homework and make sure that that's I like the uh, rhyming. That's a good (laughs) way to hook them in. Love it. (laughs) Um, Carl referenced tutoring. We employ tutors to come in and work with kids who need that extra level of Mm -hmm. academic remediation. We actually just got a really sweet Facebook message from a club parent from um, down in Montgomery County. And she just said that her son had had some real learning challenges, uh, had started working with a tutor in his Boys and Girls Club, and that his grade was brought up from a U, which is no, unsatisfactory doesn't even exist. <laughs> yeah. not doing well not good okay. to, not a B, great. to a B to so a B so that is something great. to celebrate That's and so she awesome. was just sharing her her you know gratitude for the club existing and partnering yeah. with her as a parent to help her child be successful in school so academic success is huge for us the second is healthy lifestyles so this is um, programming around substance abuse and how not to fall into bad habits mm-hmm. around uh, every every child's going to get a healthy snack when they come to the club or um, in the summertime you're going to get a, a, your breakfast and your lunch um, we also have club gardens so um, we have our kids out learning how to grow fruits and vegetables and then going to the I kitchen love that so much I need help. to come hang out with you guys and learn how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Um, and then thirdly is uh, good character and citizenship. So I am pleased to share that last year, our uh, collectively, all of our club members charted over 2,000 community service hours. Wow. So service is really big for us. We want our kids to know uh, what it means to be invested in your community and um, to be good members of society. So we're also teaching about conflict resolution and, you know, other 
other lessons of just how to be a good human. <laughs> I love this. This yeah. isn't just showing up and doing your homework after school at a table. Like yeah, this is yeah. so much more interactive and engaging and creating future leaders is such an important point that you made. Yeah. I mean, what a wonderful yes. thing for that third piece of the structure yes. to come in and teach you how to be a good citizen too. Right. But, well, here's here's the best part though. And the other differentiator is that um, our families pay little to zero dollars for their club members to be uh, with us every day um, wow. and uh, it's a very important yes, note. it's wonderful mm -hmm. and so we never turn away a family for the inability to pay and we're really proud of that because we want to serve those who need us most i love that but the only way we can do that is for the community to support us mm -hmm. and uh, we have a lot of big businesses that support us we can always take on more um, but uh, you know they're really taking care of their own community their own base uh, if you will um when their their company is right here but but we also you know individuals uh, donating uh, dollars as well mm -hmm. so we had talked about you touched a little bit on the locally funded piece of it and so carl you were kind of telling us about these local businesses who are helping in part to prevent parents from you know sort of spending all their own dollars on such an important program was curious about your funding model why the community support is so critical to the organization's existence uh, maybe even including the growth you have seen in leadership over the years for sustainable causes well I tell you uh, as Emily uh, mentioned you know we get some pass through from that the national organization but most of our dollars are, are uh, derived from from the community mm -hmm. and a lot of people uh, like Bailey said don't realize that they think that we're just funded nationally but uh, no we draw a lot of our money we raise a lot of our money locally from businesses from individuals uh, the kindness and generosity of, of the folks in the valley so um, you know it's really important and it's ongoing we're always trying to add new companies there's a lot of new companies that are mm -hmm. building and starting uh, businesses here in the area mm -hmm. they're going to need homes mm -hmm. they're going to need right. some place for their kids to go you know after school uh, so you know we want to get them involved right away in the Boys and Girls Club and uh, there's just so many opportunities uh, as well for these young people to uh, to a lot of them go on to college a lot of them have really great success stories uh, we have a youth of the year every year uh, we just we have a lot of things set up and and we've got a great group over there that's really running the place right and you're creating leaders to come back to our Roanoke community after Absolutely. college or after trade or whatever it is that they're pursuing and come back and give it back to us regions that's yeah. awesome yeah. Um, switching gears a little bit to programming so we're recording this podcast oh my gosh just as schools are coming out of spring break um, so we know that summer is on the minds of local students and my teacher husbands uh, <laughs> yeah. and this time families are often still figuring out how to fill those summer days when school is out but parents and caregivers you know obviously we have to work this has been a big deal with COVID and figuring all that out so it's kind of curious how boys and girls clubs fills that gap and supports the needs of local families Emily I think you might be able to speak on this a little bit absolutely um, and as a mom of an elementary schooler um, and a four-year-old <laughs> myself, I know the challenges of being a working parent uh, or a caregiver who doesn't have a schedule that has some resolve, which the majority of, of folks do not. And so um, it does create a puzzle because there are a lot of hours to fill for these young people. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have a place to go to be productive, like the Boys and Girls Club, you know, they're going to be on screens all day. They're going to be either right. alone or maybe with an older sibling. Um, they're not going to be making the best choices, perhaps, or more opportunity to get into trouble and to, to you know, continue down a path um, that leads to not good places. Right. So that is where we like to fill that gap and come in. Um, and so we are gearing up now to switch from this after school model, which is a few hours every day, to a full day Phew. program. And so it is, it is mm -hmm. talk about a puzzle. Yeah. Um, we serve in five municipalities. So so Roanoke City, Roanoke Ca County, Salem, Montgomery County, and Franklin County. And oh. guess what, Liz? All five of them have different school calendars, oh, too. Yeah. So, yes, what day is it right now? Um, what do you know? But, man, we are, our staff is tremendous. And so they are working. They're going to be transitioning to a 9 to 10 hour day. Wow four to five days a week, seven to eight week program, depending on which club site. Bless they, those hearts. Bless Thank you them. for doing it. <laughs> yeah. um, but what we do, you know, it extends from all of the things I mentioned in terms of our outcomes and programming. We do a lot of that same um, same programming. We definitely want to continue that learning. We want to make it fun. It is summer after all. Um, <laughs> but we do continue to, to do uh, programming that engages their minds. We have partners like Virginia Children's Theater that comes in and does theater programs. Um, last summer, we had about 500 members in our summer program. They took collectively um, is 
the clubs over 150 field trips to all wow. over. Wow. So talk about experiences. And not just cool. here locally, but they'll go to the North Carolina Zoo or to Lynchburg. Okay, to I want to be 13 West. again <laughs> and just hang out with you. <laughs> and I, I will tell one other quick story around this summer. I was uh, I was so lucky to join our Rocky Mount Club at the Taubman Art Museum for their summer field trip there. That's fun. And this young man um, shared with me that he had, with his family, driven by on the interstate and seen this building for so long mm-hmm. and always wondered what was inside. Mm-hmm. And he was so grateful to the Boys and Girls Club for providing this opportunity for him mm-hmm. to come inside and see the art. And um, what I love about that is that you just don't know what that day did for that young man. Right. What sparked that? He might have changed his life, know, inspired right? him. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That, I mean, our summer program really, and and again, also with the the transitioning to serving over thirty thousand lunches and breakfasts, that that's a, a gap during the summer for a lot of these families mm-hmm. that get that during the school year. So we're serving uh, meals and then uh, snacks as well to keep everybody and happy, inspiration happy and, and creativity yes, and motivation. <laughs> oh my gosh, all these things. So how wonderful though. So the most important question. I think we can ask today if members of our community want to get involved help in some way what are some ways that they can do that Yes. Well, we have a lot coming up, a lot of good ways to just come and learn more and engage with us. Um, we have our signature events uh, coming up at the end of May on the 24th and the 25th is our cocktail party, uh, which is the party for kids, the party. golfing I love party it. that precedes what is our 24th annual Pro-Am for Kids Golf Tournament. So uh, the party is free to attend. Um, our Youth of the Year, which is our leadership program, um, Youth of the Year will be there to speak and there'll be auctions and food and drinks. So would love for folks to visit our website and sign up for that and come join us. We still have some teams available for our golf tournament that next day. This is at Rennet Country Club. Our four on the fourth race is coming up on July 4th. That is a holiday tradition. Your summer is so packed. It is busy. <laughs> um, we'll be in the town of Benton for the second year. And whether you walk, run, or just want to bring out the kids for the kids' fun run piece, we encourage everyone to come out and join us. And then we are gearing up for our third annual Power of Moments experience this fall, which will actually be a podcast. So we're, cool. yeah, we we're, can't we're wait taking to notes today, Liz, from yeah. you. But, uh, <laughs> It'll be a six-series six, a six series podcast. We're going to feature our kids and um, some cool. local experts on some different topics and, and some cu- and members of our community. And then the event will be a live um, broadcast of the finale episode. So stay tuned for more info on awesome. that. But just in general, outside of events, um, we were so lucky to work with Buzz for Good, Michael Hemphill, and Carrie Cousins. On I love the work website. that they do. It's oh, so cool. It was such a blessing to us um, this year to be able to launch that new website as part of that partnership early in the year. So we have video videos on there just for folks to go and, and learn about us. Uh, you'll see a pop-up to sign up for our e-newsletters where we send out information just on what we have going on and then always following along on social media. That is where you can see pictures of our happy kiddos having a great time at club, um, learn more about our programming, learn more about what's going on. Um, and then I'd also, I'd be remiss if I didn't just also do a plug for anyone who is interested in youth development work. Mm-hmm. Um, if someone is passionate about changing a kid's life and, and um, wanting that to be their, their work, we are always looking for great people. Um, and then if anyone's listening who uh, believes that our club could be a good fit for their family, I encourage them to go to our website as well and, and look up what site might be best for their, their child. Perfect. Uh, so one final bonus question for you guys. Uh, where are you recommending that your participating families hang out on their downtime? When they're not with you, where would you send them? Ooh, good wow. question. We didn't practice this we one. Didn't. so <laughs> Carl, how about you? Well, I mean, you, you mentioned the uh, the museum downtown. There's a lot of great things in Rona to see. Um, did they still have the butterfly thing in the center of the square? No, they so don't they, have that anymore. So they had birds, and they now it's going to be a beautiful uh, rooftop restaurant up top there. There you go. Yeah, so I'm excited about the restaurant personally, but I don't know if I'd take my six-year-old. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Science I mean, the, the cool. star, yeah. you know, the, the, the Blue Ridge Parkway. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of great things in Roanoke. Roanoke is uh, is a hidden jewel for a lot of folks. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. No shortage. Yeah. How about you? Oh, I have plenty of places. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm like, I, I love it. So Bailey needs, local. we need top yeah. five from Bailey, like, I think. Oh, top five. Yeah. So <laughs> I love the top and I think it's like my favorite place to go and kind of browse around. I love art. And sometimes they have cool festivals downtown. I think they're kind of fun to go. Um, the Science Museum is cool to go to. I personally love to kayak, so I like to go to Carvin's Cove, and Ooh, you can nice. rent a yeah, you can rent a kayak for like eleven dollars for the day, and you just kind of do your thing yeah, over there. Super fun. Calm waters. <laughs> get off your phone, and you know yeah. what? I think that's important because it encourages your kids to get off their phones because yes. they don't want to drop those in the water. That's exactly. Right. So. You got to lock them up in the car. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, and then, you know, I think uh, obviously kids can't drink beer, but I think it's fun. Like the um, like Golden Cactus has some cool kids mm-hmm. activities out there and Parkway Brewing has a nice outdoor space that I think is fun for the whole family to go. Yeah. Kind of I'm not vibe. a big drinker, but I like to go yeah. to Golden Cactus just to hang out for the yeah, vibe. So fun. I totally understand. Yeah. Live music. I don't know. I could go on for days. Yeah. yeah. You're going to have to cut me off. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to cut you off now. Emily, where are you taking your family or recommending other families visit? Yeah. Well, I love how vibrant Roanoke is with festivals and, and we always are seeking out fun things to do that are uh, in town and happening um, on a weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's fun. Um, Kids Square is one of our favorites with my young children. Um, and then we actually live down in Botetourt at the town center and Addie Grace Playground there is, is oh, yeah. available that's and that is one. one of our, our favorite playgrounds to play at. So mm-hmm. I encourage anybody to hop down the road, even though I spend most of my time around Roanoke. Uh, <laughs> come on down that's to right. in Botetourt. But uh, yeah. Roanoke is fantastic and even after being gone for 15 years to come back, it has really turned into a, a vibrant City well, we are so glad that. to have you. And I know the Boys and Girls Club is as well. So yes. thank you for all the work that you all are doing. Any final words that we needed to say? And we can certainly list your website here in just a moment. It's I know it's a mouthful, but we'll get through it. But any other famous well, last tell, words? You know, Emily mentioned, uh, you know, the big events we have coming up, the golf tournament, the run. Those are those are great ways for us to raise money for you to go out and have fun. Mm-hmm but also give to the Boys and Girls Club. And I can't say it enough, you know, and I'd be remiss as a board member if I didn't say it enough. Uh, You know, we're raising money. So, you know, we need to bring in as many funds as we can. We're bursting at the seams right now. And there's a lot of people waiting to get into the Boys and Girls Club. And we don't want to make anybody wait. We want to just keep expanding. So uh, we really need, uh, you know, the the listeners or the viewers help. Readers, listeners, viewers, anybody and everybody. There you go. Mm -hmm. We need your help. And they need your participation, Absolutely. the children of our future and what have you. Yeah. <laughs> and any, and a gift of any size, yeah. you know, any connection, mm. su- in-kind support, plus those donated dollars, whether it's $5 or $500, mm-hmm. every gift That's changes an important a life. Note. Yeah, That's sure. an important note. Every dollar helps. Yeah. 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 And I will say real quickly, shameless plug, um, <laughs> along that, <laughs> I think – Becoming a Blue Door donor is also a, something very easy anybody can do. And that's the so, monthly donation, yeah, yes? so you can enter in any amount you want. I think all of us are guilty to going to Starbucks twice a week, three mm, times a week. Mm-hmm. Don't look at me directly when times. you say that. Don't ask me how many times I go to Starbucks. But I feel attacked in this room. Yeah, right? I'm like, it's intense. <laughs> but, you know, if you think about it that way, if you can give up one coffee a week, $5, yep. and just set it, get it out of your bank account, that's going to benefit kids more than you could ever imagine. So I think every little bit helps and I think it's important to to let everybody know that. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much. That is Bailey Jenkins, Carl York, and Emily Pinkerton with us today. On behalf of the beloved nonprofit Boys and Girls Clubs of Southwest Virginia, I am so happy to share your organization's good work today with all the work that you do for local youth. So thank you to being here. Thank you to our readers and listeners for learning more. And please, please learn how to help them, uh, how to do even more great events and help our youth by visiting their website, bgcswva.org. Again, you can learn more about the Boys and Girls Club of Southwest Virginia and give a gift at bgc swva.org. Thank you so much for being in today. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have a great day.